you've probably come across this dilemma before. You have an image that works well in both color and black and white, and you can't really make the decision of which one to go with. I've run into this problem many times, and maybe you've been there before too. Whether or not you're editing a street photography photo or a portrait, or any other kind of photo, every photographer is going to run into this situation at some point when they're editing. So today I'm gonna go over sort of my process or thought process that goes into trying to figure out when to use color and when to use black and white. And specifically, we're gonna be looking at street photography. Hopefully this will help you create better um, creative decisions when it comes to choosing between black and white and color. Now, before I go any further, I should state that, you know, when it comes to editing, there's no right or wrong way to do it. In the end, you should always do what you feel like doing, but today I'm just gonna share what works for me. And maybe if you find yourself stuck, this video will help you. As I was doing some background research into this topic, I came across this quote by Paul Outerbridge. One very important difference between color and monochromatic photography is this. In black and white, you suggest. In color, you state. Much can be implied by suggestion, but statement demands certainty, absolute certainty. And I think that statement works well in describing how I look at color photography. When you choose to edit in color, it's good to know why you're using color in the first place. You know, unlike black and white photography, when you use color, you're describing much more than what's just in the photograph, but also how the photo makes you feel. Depending on the colors of the image, it can create a different mood for the viewer. And not only that, it can even provide more context to what's going on in the photograph. So when I'm trying to decide if I wanna use color or not, I'll take into account those things. One thing I'll ask myself is whether or not color is a main subject in the photograph. If color is one of the main subjects in my photo, then you know I'm sort of obviously going to know that I'm gonna be using color for that photo. And what I mean by color being the main subject of the photo, I literally mean that the color in the image is what made you take the photo in the first place. For example, this image, this man is wearing a red shirt and the background behind him is red. I saw this red shirt next to the red wall and I sort of made that connection and that's why I took the photograph. So as you can tell, the main subject of this photo is red. Now I was already intentionally taking that photo because of that red uh, connection, but sometimes we take photos where we unintentionally find that you know, color can be considered a main subject in the photograph. So just make sure to ask yourself if color is a main subject in your photo. It might seem obvious and easy to know this, but you know, when you're a street photographer, specifically, you're dealing with a ton of photographs and something as simple as this can easily slip past your mind. Another thing I'll ask myself is, does color contribute to the context of the story I wanna tell? And this could even be considered more important and even easier to miss while you're editing your photograph. If color helps add context to the photograph, um, that might be one situation where you want to use color. But then again, that's up to you if you wanna have that context in the photo. Just be intentional about it. Here's an example of how a color photo can provide more context. When you're looking at this black and white image, can you tell if this was taken in spring or in the fall? Unless you really looked closely, it would be pretty hard to tell. When I make this photo in color, you're suddenly provided a little bit more context of you know, the time in the year that this photo was taken. You see a lot more of that green and that leads you to think that you know this was taken in spring instead of fall, which is correct. At the same time, it sort of makes the photo feel warmer and more alive, which sort of segues me into the next consideration. Does color help me create the mood I want? Now this might be the biggest reason you want to use color over black and white. Color can have a profound impact on how an image feels. You've probably heard of color theory before, and you know I could probably make a whole video about that in the future, but to keep it short and simple, you know, using different color combinations can help sort of make the viewer feel a different way and even drive their attention to different things going on in the photo just by using 
uh, certain color combinations. But the key here, again implied by that quote by Paul Outerbridge, is certainty. You want to be intentional about these decisions because it can completely change how a photo feels. If you're thinking to yourself right now, wait a minute, I've never really been intentional when it comes to using color. That might not be the case. You probably aren't thinking about it consciously as I am implying in this video right now, but you might be doing this uh, unconsciously. Unconsciously, I mean subconsciously. <laughs> you might, yeah, you're just unconscious while you're editing your photos. No, but you want to, you might be um, doing this uh, subconsciously and not really realizing that you're using color because of these certain reasons and you're just not fully aware of it. So hopefully this sort of brings it more to your attention and now you can be a little more intentional when it comes to using color. But how about black and white? When should we use black and white over color? Well, one of those reasons for me is when I wanna focus on the subject. This is probably my biggest reason for using black and white. Um, and I think a lot of other photographers, especially street photographers would say the same. In street photography, you're often dealing with images that have people in them. And more often than not, those people are what you want your viewer to be focused on in your photograph. And black and white just does an excellent job of doing this because it sort of flattens the image a bit. It's less distracting because you have less uh, varying colors in the background. So, so just by that fact alone, you're sort of driven to look at the people or subjects or the more interesting things that's happening in the photograph other than the color. And then also with a black and white image, you sort of define the skin and the emotions in people's faces a lot better, in my opinion. You can see this photo, for example. And so a black and white image can really emphasize the emotion um, that's going on in people's faces. Besides black and white, photography being sort of an aesthetic look to uh, street photography, using it to steer focus towards the subject is probably one of the main reasons street photographers today use black and white images. I'll also sneak this in here as well, even though it's sort of unrelated, but just having a black and white image also simplifies the process for street photographers. You know, we're usually dealing with a ton of photographs. You know, you don't have to second guess yourself if you want to take away or add more magenta to your highlights. Let's look at one photograph in particular. In this image, I can potentially use color or black and white. Uh, I think they both work pretty well in my opinion. So in the color image, as you can see, there's, there's not a lot of uh, different colors going on. So it's not really a distraction, but there's also not really any context provided because it's in color. A black and white image here works just as well, but in my opinion, a bit better because in this case, it's sort of directing your attention to the boy's eyes. Because it's in black and white, there's just a lot more added contrast to the photo, which makes his eyes uh, stand out a lot more in this image. And so, yeah, that's one reason I would go black and white with this photo instead of color. Another reason you could go black and white is to bring composition into focus. While black and white is certainly a great option to bring out the focus in, you know, the facial expressions of people, I also find that a black and white image can bring your attention to the lines and shapes going on in the photograph, which in most cases contributes to the composition of your photograph, or in my case, my photographs. That's why I always find myself kind of steering towards black and white when it comes to um, architectural photography or photos where I have people interacting with the architecture around them. And I find that just having it in black and white brings out the contrast and you're more focused on how all these lines and shapes are interacting with each other. In a similar sense, black and white can also work to your advantage when you're using harsh light and shadow. Images where I use harsh light and shadow are often ones that I end up going with black and white edits. Since I'm already dealing with that contrast between light and shadow, black and white is just going to bring that contrast up even further and I think makes for some pretty powerful looking photographs as a result. So you know if you have those street photography photos where, where you're dealing with the silhouettes of people against harsh light or people coming out of shadows, those types of images are going to work really well in black and white. Here are a few examples of that. As you can see here, going black and white, 
it makes those shadows so much stronger and it makes use of that negative space a lot more in my opinion the last two instances where i use black and white over color are sort of related so i'll sort of talk about them together and that's dealing with low light slash high iso images in a last resort when i just can't get the colors right in those scenarios where i just can't get the colors right in an image I will go with black and white. A lot of you have probably done that before. I also mentioned low light images because usually these are those types of images where I just can't get the color right. Higher ISO images with a lot more noise, color and digital images, they just aren't friendly to work with. And so a lot of cases I will go with a black and white image instead. And sometimes I find it actually being a better looking image because of that. Um, when you have a lot of noise in an image, it just does not look really good, in my opinion, when it's a color photo. However, when you make it black and white, as you can see in this example, I have a color image that's high ISO, you can see all that noise. And then when I make it black and white, that noise sort of isn't as bad looking. It sort of looks like a filmic grain, in my opinion. And I think, you know, using black and white, you can sort of turn that a high noise image into an advantage and so that sort of wraps up my thought process when it comes to choosing between color and black and white. Like I said in the beginning of this video, editing is really all up to you and what you personally like. None of these things I just said are necessarily the right thing to do. However, I do strongly believe in the concept of being intentional when it comes to making the creative edits that you do with your photograph. In my opinion, the editing workflow and process for photographers is almost just as important as the shooting process. This is where you can make personal touches to your own photography and find your own style. And that's why I say it's important to be intentional when it comes to editing your photographs. When you, when you start to edit with intention, you're gonna start to better understand why you're making the creative decisions you're making and just have a better sense of the style of photography that you're developing for yourself. So I hope the things that I mentioned in this video can help you make those decisions and be more intentional about your editing. If you feel like you learned something today in this video, uh, leave a comment below. Um, even provide some of your own thought process when it comes to choosing between color and black and white. Pretty interested in what you guys have to say yourself. You never know who might see your comment and learn something new because of it. So leave a comment below, like this video if you learned something, and I'll see you all in the next video.